The next tool that we're gonna look at is the path loft tool. And this is a little bit different than guide lofts because in this case, you can only have one path but it does not have to touch the sources. So if I were to just do a standard ruled loft between my upper and lower rectangles, we can see it does exactly as we would assume. It's going to create the shape that blends between those two sources. I could choose to have caps if I wanted a solid piece of geometry, or if I wanted the surface, I can leave that turned off. Now, what happens when we introduce the path into this scenario? So again, clicking on the path tool, I'm gonna click on my two sources, and then it says in the action palette to click on our path. We can see it blends between those, but it pushes the geometry as it's blending between those two in the direction of the path. So this could be a very useful tool to come up with unique geometry. Let's look at one more example, this time with three sources instead of just two. So again, clicking on the path loft tool, this time I'm going to hold down the shift key before I start clicking my sources. Anytime you have more than two sources, you need to use the shift key. And again, you have to click on them in the order you want Form Z to loft them. So bottom to top, top to bottom, you decide. Once I've done that, I can now complete the set by clicking off to the side. And now the action palette asks me to select the path. So now lofting between all three shapes, and using this path that I have drawn on the side to influence the direction that that goes to get more complex geometry. Next up is the branched loft tool. Clicking on that shows us some tool options where we can see the number of branches as an option. So in this case, I'm going to leave this at the default number of two branches, but depending on how many sources you have, you may wanna go with a higher number there. And let's take a look at what this does. So following the action palette, it says to select the profile shape for the trunk. So think of this as kind of like a tree. We have a base shape, and then once we have that base shape, it's going to loft the branches. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key to select these bottom two circles as the trunk. Once I've done that, I'm gonna click off to the side to complete the set. Then I'm gonna select my two sources for the branches. And you can see exactly what this does is it blends from that trunk up into each branch. And in this case, it's creating a really beautifully blended shape between all of those sources. Now, of course, you could choose to turn caps on for that and make solid object. It's totally up to you depending on the type of geometry that you're after. Let's look at one more example of that using the same technique. So again, clicking on the branch loft, I'm going to hold down the shift key and select both parts for my trunk click anywhere in the project to complete the set, and then click on each of the branches and create blended shapes between those. And one of the things you'll notice about the outcome of this tool is that it actually cleans up all of the geometry that would have been on the inside of this and blends it together seamlessly on the outside. It's a really fantastic tool to have in our toolbox. The next tool that we're going to look at is the perpendicular loft tool. And in this case, I have four different sources that are all vertically oriented, just to show that you can do this in any orientation. You don't have to loft just straight up and down like I have been in all of the other examples. And in this case, I'm going to click on all four of these. So holding down the shift key, I'm gonna click on these in a rotational order around the Z axis to select all four source profiles. And then I'm going to execute that command by clicking off to the side. Now this tool will perpendicularly orient the geometry so that it blends into each one of these shapes. And one of the cool things about this is you can click on this close button up here and go back to the original source from the last one that you chose. So depending on how your sources are oriented, this may or may not work for you, but in this case, it works really well. Now, I wanted to look at a couple of different things that are going on with a perpendicular loft. So I'm gonna go over to my top view so that we can really illustrate this. And you'll notice that one of the options in the tool options is perpendicular to, and right now it's set to all. So where every source was, the loft is orienting perpendicularly to each one of those. And what you can do is you can go to first and last and you'll see that the geometry changes a little bit. Notice that these ISO lines are no longer perpendicular to the original source shapes. They're a little bit off to the side. So depending on the kind of fit that you're looking for between these shapes, you may choose different options in this perpendicular to setting. And in this case, all may be the right choice for me because I want them to line up perfectly as they go around. Whereas if I go back to first, 
you can see that I get a perpendicular orientation at the very beginning, but none of the other ones have that perpendicular orientation. And I get quite a bit different geometry when I do that. So again, switching between those two settings, you can see the shape changes pretty significantly. So you may wanna mess with that once you've got your shape and you're in the object buffer to see what the different perpendicular settings can do for you. Let's do an example here with a surface that I created for an earlier video, which was for the contour tool where we sliced a bunch of topographic contours out of the surface. What I'm going to do is I'm going to basically create a solid model out of this top surface. So using my vector line tool, I'm going to create an outline of the surface in a very simple shape, and then I'm going to loft between those two. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to click on lock to plane through first point so that I make sure that I lock this new drawing to a reference plane, even though I'm going to be clicking on the different corner points of this top surface. You can see when I do that, it creates a flat surface projected onto a reference plane. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and I'm going to move that down below my other surface. Now I'm going to use my ruled surface loft to loft between those two, but before I do that, I want to make sure I choose to keep my operands, otherwise my top and bottom here are going to go away. So click on the bottom surface, click on the top surface, and you can see it builds the sides of my topo model. So now using the stitch tool, I can stitch all those together. This time I'm going to delete my operands. So I'm going to stitch the top to the sides, and then I'm going to stitch the sides to the bottom. And now if I go into my info for that object, we'll see that it is indeed a solid object. So using that ruled loft allowed me to blend between those two and then using the stitch tool, I stitched it all together to create a solid topography object. In all of the lofting examples that I've shown, showing controls has not been an option after the loft has been completed and we've gotten out of the object buffer. So as soon as you switch to another tool, the object buffer is erased and you can't right click on any of those objects to show controls to change their parameters. Now there is one more lofting tool that I wanna cover in this video and that is the NURBS loft. So that is found here in the NURBS surfaces tool palette and the NURBS loft is the first tool in that palette. And so what I'm going to do is loft once again between my two sources. And when I do that, you can see we have additional options in the tool options. We can do loose lofting or tight lofting. So depending on how closely you wanna maintain the tolerance between your source objects, you may wanna choose a tighter tolerance by choosing tight lofting. You also have the ability to change the degree of the curve which means you can actually subdivide it into additional segments as it moves along the U and the V coordinates. I'm not gonna cover that in this video, but I am going to show you how to get to the parametric control. So just simply selecting the NURBS loft after you've created that, you can show controls on that, and then you have the ability to manipulate those source shapes after the fact. So lofting can have more parametric controls if you use the NURBS lofting tool. Again, the other lofting tools do not allow you to have those types of controls after the fact. So depending on what you're after and looking ahead, if you ever need to change that geometry and you don't wanna re-loft it, maybe you just wanna massage it a little bit after the fact, you may wanna use the NURBS loft tool to create that geometry instead. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to get notified when new videos are released on this channel, click the subscribe button below and click the notification bell icon to get a notification when new videos are released. See you in the next one.